instructed to be very brief. Um, so thank you to Foreign Policy Association and Korean Counselor for inviting me here today. Um, I'd like to also thank the speakers for giving a very insightful comments and very persuasively laying out for us the importance of U.S.-South Korea bilateral relations and alliance. So if you, that's the main takeaway. Um, and I have to assure my Korean colleagues, trust me, uh, most policymakers in Washington are absolutely in agreement with you that this alliance is vital. Um, and thankfully, the current state of U.S.-South Korea alliance relationship is, there's no doubt, it's the strongest than it has ever been. Um, in terms of, it, South Korea obviously is the most important economic and strategic partner for, uh, for the United States. We still have 28,500 troops stationed in Korea. Um, we have South Korea's under nuclear um, umbrella, which means extended deterrence. And we've heard from Dr. Kim earlier that South Korea does take responsibility for its defense, talking about $850 million a year contribution, 52% cost of stationing U.S. forces Korea, despite what Mr. Trump says. And our two economies are joined by U.S. ROC FTA. You've just heard very thorough explanation on that. Um, so, and I think Dr. Kim pointed out that there is a bright future for U.S.-South Korea economic relations even um, going forward. And on the security side, I just want to give a brief remark on the security side, on how to deal with North Korea. Actually, today, U.S. ROC relations and agreement on that is also the closest that it has ever been um, in terms of alliance issues on North Korea. I mean, before we had you know, different policies from Washington and Seoul going different directions. Right now, there is a very tight coordination between Seoul and Washington. Um, in the aftermath of the fifth nuclear test. Now we have a joint approach um, that, that, that includes some certain element of pressure against North Korea, and we've seen how U.S. and South Korea work together very closely after the fourth nuclear test earlier this year of really, and that's why they were able to expand United Nations Security Council sanctions, which resulted in UNSC's unanimous adoption of the resolution 2270. Um, so we've seen that, and now President Park has also, U.S. and South Korea has agreed that we're deployed THAAD, U.S. Theater High Altitude Defense um, Ballistic Missile Defense System to South Korea. So that's the point that I want to truly emphasize that we have never had such a stronger uh, alliance relationship as we have today, both economic, on the economic side and on the security side. But another point that we should remember is it is true that despite this overall very positive relationship that we have with each other, um, continued management alliance of alliance is absolutely ne necessary post US election and presidential elections in South Korea a year after that. Um, because there are inevitable disagreements, and I'm not going to get into it because Dr. Kim did go into it, but I absolutely agree. There are, there are some issues that we have to be careful about, uh, and we disagree on, uh, particularly some broader strategic elements in East Asia, and namely, you know, the big elephant in the region, and what are we talking about? China, right? Um, there is a different perspective on this, right? From Washington's perspective, South Korea at times it hesitates to take steps they would antagonize Beijing, understandably, um, being reluctant to maybe criticize Beijing on some of its actions in South China Sea too harshly, for example. And we understand that because from South Korean perspective, it's it has to be careful, right? Um, because South Co China and South Korea have do have very robust economic, cultural, and trade um, ties. Um, so I would not belabor that point because we don't have a lot of time. But it is absolutely. Um, uh, it, the alliance does need management, um, and China is something that we have to really con be concerned about, the China quandary, as Dr. Kim mentioned. Uh, so when we speculate on the future of U.S.-South Korea relations and alliance relationship, China is definitely a, a factor to consider. I'll just conclude with a comment on the future, because we haven't really, you know, your future of U.S.-South Korea alliance. And Dr. Kim had uh, on the slide, in the last slide, had a couple questions in the bottom. He didn't quite get to it, he didn't, but I was reading them. He says, what if the U.S. reduces its presence in Asia, and what will be the new frontier of cooperation between the two countries? You asked those questions. So I just wanted to quickly comment on that. There's no question that from U.S. perspective, continue U.S., strong U.S.-South Korea alliance relationship, and 
continued US troop presence in, in Korea, even post-unification scenario, is the optimal scenario uh, for us. But um, even if we were not to maintain US troop presence, particularly maybe in a post-unification scenario for a whole host of reasons, um, I believe we could still maintain an, an alliance uh, in a more attenu attenuated form that would deliver some, maybe not all, uh, of the benefits of the current US-South Korea alliance. And in particular, I think this is very important, the arrangement where it's US security guarantees that arrangement um, without a permanent garrison even, um, I think that, that would continue to limit nuclear proliferation in the Northeast Asian region. And that's a very important thing because that is the bedrock goal of the United States policy since 1945. Again, Mr. Trump um, doesn't quite uh, talk about that. But just the last thing on the, in terms of the steps we should take, the US and South Korea should take uh, in terms of alliance cooperation. I think it is imperative that we, the two allies, do continue to work together to continue to upgrade, modernize, and expand the alliance from the original purpose of deterring just North Korea. Um, that includes all the political and economic and diplomatic and cultural cooperation. And, and Dr. Kim mentioned some of that stuff on all the many, many areas that we can cooperate on. Peacekeeping, space, missile defense, name it. Counterterrorism, counter narcotics, proliferation, so on. So the bottom line is that the more the alliance expands beyond its original threat-based um, rationale, right, from North Korea threat, alliance based from just deterring North Korea or defending South Korea from North Korea, we need to expand that. And once we expand that alliance based on common values, such as democracy, human rights, and uh, free markets, and I think they will, they will make it more difficult for Korea and eventually unify Korea and even Washington under any administration to really later jettison the alliance because alliance is so important, US-South Korea alliance relationship. Thank you.